is anyone else getting fed up every time they go on Twitter or they have a conversation with someone about Chelsea, the first thing they're jumping on is how Enzo and Casado are massive flops. Tell me you don't watch Chelsea Football Club by telling me Casado isn't very good. Telling me he's a flop. Look, we're going to get into it a little bit more. I'm Dan and this is Chelsea Fan TV and today's video is brought to you by Match Bingo. What I want you to do is download the app right now from the link in our description below because we've got great Premier League games coming up this weekend. Match Bingo will have a card for you. You've got a chance at winning up to £175 off of just £2. But you need to remember to gamble responsibly and please make sure to read the terms and conditions. This app's a lot of fun. It can win you pretty good sized prizes off of just a small bet. And really, you don't need to know too much about what's going on in the game. It's all just the luck on the game of the bingo card. Let's get into it. Enzo Fernandez, Moises Casado, are they flops? One's cost over £150 million in Casado from Brighton. And Benfica sold us Enzo Fernandez for just over £105 million. They are never, ever, ever going to be worth their transfer fees. Let's get that out there. There are very few players that move for that size of transfer fee and become worth it, to be completely honest with you. I think right now, if we're looking at very recent transfers, Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice are the only two players in world football that have moved for that kind of fee and it's not being questioned right now because they've been exceptional. If you are even slightly off the pace, there will be question marks and discussions had about whether or not you're a flop. If you are quite a lot off the pace and your team is in mid-table of the Premier League, there will be huge, huge debate. And unfortunately for both these players that Chelsea have signed, we find ourselves 11th in the Premier League under a horrific manager who's completely misprofiled both at times. And we are shockingly, shockingly bad in some games. And these players have been at the heart of that negative, poor performance. However, there's been moments of brilliance for both as well. I think if we get into Enzo Fernandez first, we just have to look at him a little bit before we signed him. He'd only played six months in European football. He'd only played for River Plate before that. And he obviously went to the World Cup with Argentina, wasn't starting at first, then got bought into the side, was an integral part, and won the Young Player of the World Cup award which, to name a few other players, you're looking at like Mbappe, Paul Pogba, Podolski, Thomas Muller, Landon Donovan, Michael Owen. So a mixed bag of players there. Some have gone on to have very, very good role, uh, careers in football, some slightly questionable. I mean, look at how Paul Pogba's career could have gone and what's happened with it. So you just don't know. But it, what I'll tell you that that award does add is a bit of extra pressure. But he came from a team that had just won the World Cup in Argentina, a country. So this is a guy that in Chelsea's side is actually a winner. Very limited, might I add, that role in Chelsea's side. Because not many of these players are, are winners. He's been... He obviously signed in January 2023. And I'd say his first six months, he looked okay. And I think we were looking at the team he was in. And we were questioning the team he was in. That was the reason it wasn't going that well for Chelsea and Enzo Fernandez because we had a poor manager, then we got Lampard, and we just weren't very clinical. So wherever he could get on the ball to create, there was no one to create to. And I think we could probably all agree as Chelsea fans, that was the real issue. But he probably finished up last season, and if you're looking at numbers, he was pretty underwhelming, but we definitely saw glimpses of him. This season under Pochettino, right from the off, I think he's been misprofiled. Actually, I'll, I'll just slightly remove right from the off because... We saw one of his best games ever for Chelsea against Liverpool first game of the season. Then from then on, I think he's been misprofiled. We saw him getting on the ball, dictating the game, controlling the tempo, creative in terms of what he was offering on the ball, short passes, long passes, in behind the defence. He was making stuff happen in that game against Liverpool. And for 70 minutes, I'd say he dominated the game. However, from then on, Pochettino sort of identified him as this attacking eight or high up 10 and often at times we've seen Enzo Fernandez almost isolated out of the game because of how high up he's been asked to play on the football pitch and last last week against uh, Brentford we also saw him playing out on the towards the left wing and if you look at the heat map of where the players occupy he literally was playing some teams roles 
as have that as a left winger. And that's where Enzo was for Chelsea as our centre midfielder. And it's crazy. And this is a huge, huge problem for him is that he's being asked to play in a role that quite clearly isn't where he's comfortable and isn't his best role. I don't think he's a leader. I think there's there's still quite obviously a language barrier there between him and his teammates and a lot of our teammates. I don't think there's much cohesion in terms of the language that's spoken because when I watch interviews and I see social media clips, there isn't a cohesive language being spoken. There's a lot of broken English and I think that's probably a problem, especially for young players as well. There's no real leader in the dressing room to kind of make everyone work in one direction and kind of control what is sort of spoken. And we saw at Cobham, and the reason I'm mentioning this, because we've seen at Cobham in recent years, or a few years now gone by, but there was the French speakers, there was English speakers, there were Spanish speakers, there was the Brazilians and the Portuguese speakers. They all had their own sort of friendship cliques and these groups that they had, but that ultimately everyone came together as a collective. I don't really see that right now. Enzo Fernandez is the only Argentinian, Argentinian in this Chelsea squad bar the coaches and the management team who aren't going to be his friends. So hopefully they've helped him to settle in, but you just don't know. He's only a young guy still. He's 23. It's a massive move and there's an awful lot of pressure on him. But what we've seen on the pitch this season hasn't been good enough in a Chelsea show. It really hasn't. It's been disappointing at times. And if it continues like this, I think we could all agree that Enzo Fernandez has been a flop for Chelsea Football Club because he hasn't been good enough. And the thing that I think shocks me most, one is the lack of numbers that have been put up. Even if he's at position, he's played higher up and he hasn't put attacking numbers up, which worries me a bit. Because I think even if you're playing out of position and you play that higher up, you find yourself in positions where you should be able to generate goals and assists and he hasn't they're very limited this season we've seen some special moments from him as a player the worrying sign for me is his lack of recovery speed remember we signed him as the Jorginho replacement and an improvement I don't think he's shown anything yet to suggest that he is an improvement or a better replacement than Jorginho was for Chelsea and that's saying something because there were times when Jorginho wasn't very good, but he's one of those that you don't realise what you had till you lose it and you see him working in a system that's perfect for him and he's running games. Look at him against Newcastle the other week for Arsenal. And the bonus I'd say Enzo has over a lot of this Chelsea squad right now is he seems pretty durable. Even with injuries, he's willing to play and he's willing to get himself in the side and fight. Ultimately though, performances have been questionable for me all season long. We move on to his midfield counterpart in Moises Casado. And this is a player that ultimately the transfer fee got way out of hand because of how we managed our negotiations throughout the summer. We were useless in terms of trying to be coy about getting this deal done. We put it out in the public eye. We let Liverpool get involved. They drove the fee up as well. An absolute mess. And he nearly went to Anfield, if you want to believe those rumours. But I think that was all a ploy to drive the fee up. I think... They were probably aware of the player that was there and Liverpool would have known that he wasn't worth the fee. Now, let's look at let's look at Casado in a little bit more detail. The way he played last season for Brighton at times was magnificent. It obviously meant he was going to get himself a move. I thoroughly believe there was a player in there that everyone saw and the top clubs were excited by. I do believe that. Never worth the fee that Chelsea paid, but a very good player extremely press resistant, was key to what Brighton were doing and was very easy on the eye to watch. Not really a goal threat, not really an attacking threat, but a very dynamic, unique type of player um, that was shining in a Brighton squad that were doing very, very well. Move on a little bit to when he's come to Chelsea. Pochettino's played him in a completely different role. From day one, he looked useless. He was way off the pace because he didn't have a pre-season because he got messed about all pre-season. He... Couldn't complete five-yard passes, couldn't even knock a ball 20 yards to a player um, with a long pass, and they were horrific, to be honest with you. I was so shocked by what I was seeing in terms of his long passing for the price that we'd paid. I still am. I, I feel like that's a massive weakness he has to his game. However, in recent weeks, I think there's seven games in a row he's played the full 90, we are starting to see a very, very good player. And a player that I think now is instrumental to this Chelsea midfield. I think if you take him out, you really do notice the difference. He is exceptionally good at winning the ball back. He backs himself against very strong runners of the ball that he will recover and get in front of them to win the tackle rather than make a foul. 
His passing over a very short distance has improved. It's it's often one, two touch. It's very quick. And he's aware of he, what he wants to do with the ball. It's times when he's isolated with options in front of him that I feel like his game is very limited. I don't think he's got a killer pass on him. And I think his best bet is to get on the ball and move it on to a better player. But some players can make a whole career out of that and be very, very good. And I think we're starting to see that from him. He's never going to be a goal threat. I hear people telling me he's an eight. I'm not sure that he is. I think in a double pivot, though, sitting with someone else next to him in field, he can be a very useful player. And I think if you play through him when you're getting pressed, you will see how good he can be. And while Thiago Silva was in the side, we refused to play through him. They refused to let him take the risks. And at times, we've seen him dwell on the ball and be shocking and give the ball away. I think Liverpool, he was pretty bad. I think um, there was the Middlesbrough game where he scored and then gave the ball away, if I'm right. It might not have been that game, but it's definitely happened a few times now that he's been caught in possession and given the ball away. And I think times at Brighton, he was given so much trust that very rarely happened. He very rarely got caught in possession. He was able to turn a man or pass and move around a man and play little triangles and diamonds that Brighton are renowned for under De Zerbi. But ultimately, when you're paying that type of price tag, you do expect a world beater. And unfortunately for Chelsea, we've now shown that we're willing to pay that price for mediocrity. And for us to sign a world beater, we're probably looking at double the price of what an average player might cost or an above average Premier League player might cost. And I think last season, you could say that's what he was. But this season, he's been bang average. He's been a good player in this side. But ultimately, what does it take to be a good player in this Chelsea side right now when we're sitting 11th in the Premier League? But I don't think right now it's fair to say either of the players are flops. I don't think they've been good enough on a long enough consistent basis Enzo Fernandez, we know, has had six months longer than Casado, but genuinely, I'd expect more from both of them. I think we are seeing a very good player in Casado more than we're seeing in Enzo Fernandez. I think Casado's performances in recent weeks have been a little bit better than what I think Enzo's have been. And I think if you took Enzo out of the team right now, you wouldn't miss him that much. If you took Casado out of the team, you would. And anyone that tells me that he's not good then I know you're not watching Chelsea because he's, he is proven to be a good player. And if he can keep this level up to the end of the season and onwards from then, we've got ourselves an exceptional player. Enzo Fernandes, on the other hand, I do need to see more. I need to see a lot more if he's going to be the type of player that people say is the, the Cesc Fabregas of this new Chelsea generation. Because right now, I just don't see it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are they good enough for Chelsea? Do we Have we signed the right players for the money that we've spent in terms of midfielders? I'm not so sure that we have, but I think we can all agree that Casado's getting better and better and Enzo Fernandez has been completely misprofiled under Pochettino. Hopefully, with smarter, more intelligent, tactical, um, tactically strong managers, unlike Pochettino, who lines his team up in a way that baffles me every single time I see his team, we might see the better of both these players. And I think that could go for a lot of the players in this Chelsea squad because I believe this Chelsea squad should be achieving higher than where it is in the league right now. Let me know your thoughts. If you've liked the content, make sure to like the video. And I will catch you in the next one as we build up towards Newcastle on Monday night. I will see you in a bit.